Hello, it seems Hi. like we've got most people online here. Um, just waiting for a couple more. Those of you who are attentive to detail will realize we've got one new person joined us today who is actually going to be your seminar leader for the first hour or so. 24 people. We need to see 26 and then we know everybody is here. So let me see. Just one more needed. Wow. So for the conveners, please remember to send me some sort of attendance record at the end of the proceedings today. Uh, what happened uh, last time, a couple of you didn't, but I was able to recreate a list because since I had been visiting the different breakout rooms, it was there was enough information there when I, when I had to repopulate them and also when I visited them, there was enough information there to... Um, Oh, that's interesting. There we go. Just realised why my uh, why I wasn't on the video. I had a piece of paper stuck over the <laughs> piece of paper stuck over the uh, camera on my computer. Okay. Well, with twenty five people, so it's one student missing uh, because the two co hosts are on board at the moment. Uh, without further ado, I will introduce everybody. Well. Good afternoon. Hi. Hello. Everyone's on mute, so I um, don't expect a chorus of, uh, of joy in response. But uh, anyway, it's always good to say hi anyway. Uh, our guest today is Dr. Vipawi Limsakuna, who, uh, well, she is running another section of this, of this topic, uh, the creative process. Last year in the spring, when this... Um, when this particular seminar series was first developed. Uh, Vipawi and I developed it together. And the history is that, um, well, I, I call her Vipawi because I've known her for years. Uh, uh, tell, tell us what you'd like to be, how, how would you like the students to refer to you as? Mm, I, I prefer you guys call me Miss Lim. <laughs> Okay, so uh, so Miss Lim, it shall be. Uh, don't be fooled; she has a PhD. <laughs> yeah, so it really ought to be Doctor Lim, but uh, she's also just one of the absolutely nicest people I have met in my life, and I, I just mean I mean that totally sincerely. And you know, my my family thinks she's one of the nicest people they've met in their entire life, and so does uh, so does everybody I um, ever. Uh, anybody who knows her and that I've talked to them, they will just volunteer that she is one of the nicest people they've ever met. So uh, there we go. And I don't want to embarrass you either. But, uh, the, um, the thing is, so uh, Vipawi was a graduate student here at UC Merced. She came to us from Thailand, where she has a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering and also a master's degree in petroleum engineering. So then she came to UC Merced. Um, somewhere in all of that, she did a, 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 like a few weeks at University of Michigan, I think, while she was doing her master's. Um, but she came to UC Merced and was one of the best TAs that anybody has ever seen. And certainly on my list of people, I, and I've been, I've been working with TAs for nearly four decades, and it's uh, actually just done a great job. So um, give her, it's difficult to give somebody a warm welcome when we're all kind of spread around the state here, but uh, in your minds, as you view, as you, as you look towards, maybe look at the map that I circulated, and so, so focus your minds on uh, Merced, and that is where Vipawi is at the moment. And she's going to tell you something about the creative process, but with a Thailand perspective. And you know, if you've, part, part again of uh, these Spark seminars is just to, to travel and while we cannot travel right now because the, the trains aren't moving and the planes don't go anywhere terribly interesting right now but the great thing about education is it allows us to travel in our minds and, and use our imagination so with that um, go for it thank you for the introduction and also um, it's my pleasure to working with you all today and um, I 
um, I need to mention the main reason that um, I would like to share with you about uh, the creative process, inspirational from people and places um, with the topic of Mahidon and Dunya Day and loyal, Thai loyal family and also Thailand because we would like to see the creative use of wealth and privilege in the in um, in the history, okay? And um, Professor Waini and me are curious why the loyal family, they already have wealth. They don't have to work. Um, why they still work for people, right? So um, based on my reading and listening and talking with people, um, the main reasons are one, they have learned from their parents and two, they would like people to have opportunity to have proper quality of life. Okay. And um, let me share my screen with you guys here on the outline for um, the class today. Okay. Huh. Mm. Right now I share this screen. So you should see the PowerPoint here. So first of all, the first thing I would like to share is the vocabulary. <laughs> so what dika in Thai is mean hello, okay? In case none of you have heard of it before. And for the second one that you see, so what um, this one for a man to say it. And the first one is for a woman to say it, okay? And my plan is to share with you guys three videos. One, um, the Museum Sayam. This one, the video was taken at the Museum Sayam by my sister, Yoyo, and it did by her as well. And the second one is Jim Thompson House. At this place, they um, make silk uh, from um, silk cocoon, right? from silk cocoon, which is one of the popular um, product important from uh, exported from Thailand. And um, this is example of Thai silk, okay, is the Thai, uh, Thai silk, okay. Um, and also the video about special tribute to His Majesty King Bhumipon and Junior Date by Samantha Jane Power. Okay. And let me shake the. <laughs> okay. Thank you for your your. Uh, thank you for everyone. Welcome message too. <laughs> okay. For the. I think I can share this video first. Um, So she will talk about um, King Pumipon Adunyadet or King Rama Nai. Okay. Do you all hear the audio? Yes. Thank you. One of the many days that I feel very privileged to represent the whole country of the United Nations. Of course, to have the chance to address you on such an important occasion. On behalf of the United States, I wish to convey our deepest and most heartfelt condolences to Her Majesty, Queen Siriki, her children, and grandchildren, and to the people of Thailand on the passing of His Majesty. His Majesty was not only a lifelong friend and partner to the United States, but he also had deep personal ties to our nation. The King's parents met in Cambridge, Massachusetts, where both were studying medicine, his father at Harvard and his mother at Simmons College. His Majesty only lived there as an infant, but his presence is still very much felt in Cambridge. 
I can speak with a bit of authority on this subject because before I had the privilege of serving in the Obama administration, I was a professor in Cambridge at Harvard's Kennedy School of Government. And my walk to and from campus often took me through King Pumapan Square, which sits adjacent to the Kennedy School and was named in honor of his birth. Walking through King Pumapan Square, it is not uncommon to see Thai people who had come to pay homage to his majesty, taking photographs next to the plaque bearing his name in the square. There are several places like that in Cambridge. In the nearby Brigham and Women's Hospital where His Majesty's mother once worked, hardly a day goes by when Thai visitors do not come bearing gifts, flowers, or small handwritten notes. That is the kind of devotion His Majesty inspired in the Thai people. Nearly two decades ago, a journalist asked the king how he wanted to be remembered. He replied that he cared very little about how history remembered him. He said, quote, if they want to write about me in a good way, they should write how I do things that are useful, end quote. In the eyes of his majesty, doing things that were useful meant finding a way to solve problems that affected real people. Most importantly, the vulnerable and marginalized people. And as the king saw it, the only way to know what was useful and to understand the problems that people were facing was to get out into the field, into the places where people lived. So the king traveled constantly within his country, in particular to the poor and rural parts where over the course of his tenure, he would develop thousands of development projects. But it wasn't just that his majesty went to these places, you see leaders do that a fair amount, it was also how he went. He made a point of meeting directly with locals, be they fishermen, rubber or rice farmers, or primary school students. When he met with officials, he would choose those working at the very grassroots, agronomists, school teachers, policemen. And his majesty was more than just a keen observer. Being useful meant helping fix the problems that he encountered and empowering the Thai people to do the same. He had a mind that was at once kinetic and deliberate, creative, if you've heard, and scientific. Over the course of his life, he registered nearly 40 patents and trademarks, often for inventions that he built, tested, and modified himself, and most of which aimed at tackling everyday problems faced by the poor. This is completely extraordinary. Take the invention nicknamed the monkey's cheeks, which he designed to address the perennial floods that Thailand experiences. His majesty remembered seeing as a child the way that monkeys would store chewed bananas in their cheeks so that they could eat them late and built a system of small reservoirs that worked using a similar principle, storing excess water during heavy rains that could be used later for irrigation. The system of the monkey's cheeks is still being used across Thailand today. Many of the king's inventions fit this pattern, merging conservation with human development. He was decades ahead of the curve in recognizing that what was environmentally sustainable was crucial to the long-term health of communities. Let me conclude. In June 1960, His Majesty returned to the United States at the invitation of then President Dwight Eisenhower. He was asked to address a joint session of the US Congress. He was just 32 years old. Speaking to Congress, His Majesty said that he had accepted the invitation in part because of what he called the natural human desire to see my birthplace, Cambridge, which he returned to on that trip. But he also came, he said, to affirm our two nations' unique friendship and shared values. As he put it, friendship of one government for another is an important thing but it is friendship of one people for another that assuredly guarantees peace and progress. His Majesty told members of the US Congress that there was one tradition valued above all others for the Thai people, the commitment to family. He said, quote, the members of a family are expected to help one another whenever there is a need for assistance. 
The giving of aid is a merit in itself. The giver does not expect to hear others sing his praises every day, nor does he expect any return. The receiver is nevertheless grateful. He too, in his turn, will carry out his obligations." End quote. Now the king was speaking about the bonds and generosity among members of Thai families. But in retrospect, his words can just as easily be applied to the way that he lived his life, a life of always looking for ways to be useful to those in need, a life of giving and of serving every single day, not to earn praise, not to get something in return, but rather because that is what one does for family. And His Majesty considered all the people of Thailand to be his family. How fortunate the Thai people were to have had His Majesty as a member of their family. And how fortunate we are to be able to learn from the way that this remarkable king chose to live his life. Thank you. So that's the um, summary some of um, um, perspective to perspective about King Pumi Pon and Dunya Det. And I send this video and some other video related to Thai royal family or like the interview video to one of my friends and then she get back to me. Nice to see video of um, him um, and she went to Thailand during the time that King Ramanai or King Pumipon just passed away. So she told that I'm glad to see why people love him, okay, or why he was so loved. And she mentioned that she wished the leader of each country have a goal of doing what is good and right for all people. So that's a comment from one of my friends. And um, I also share with you guys about the, uh, the article. Um, I can bring up some article here. So this is the article from Hawa School of Public Health. This one they mention about celebrating the legacy of Thailand father of public health and modern medicine. This one they mention about the father of King Pumipon. Okay. His name is Mahidon. Okay. And um, I highlight some part here. So he, Mr. Songkla, he came to the U.S. as a international student and through his study, people refer him as Mr. Songkla. So he kept his loyal identity a secret from his classmate until he almost come back to Thailand. Okay. And the other part about um, Mr. Songkha, um, this one, he is a professor of environmental physiology. Mentioned about him is that he wasn't just coming to collect a Harvard degree. He understood how air and water quality, poverty, and occupation affect health. And he wanted to do something about it. So this is what he um, mentioned about Mr. Songkha. And this one, um, uh, King Pumipon mother, um, she studied at the Simon College, yeah, um, study nursing. Okay. So these are some um, family, his, royal family history. Okay. And um, for the second video that I will show you will be the video about Museum Sayam, which will show some Thai history 
and Thai culture. Okay. Any comment question at this point from any one of you related to the content? Okay. okay, this is the video clip. Okay. It is loading. This one is the hat for farmer. Thank you. 
that is a tuk tuk. <laughs> it's a three wheel drive. <laughs> That is Thai boxing, Muay Thai. Oh, that's the back. Purse. Yenta <laughs> fall seasoning drink. How do your friends uh, taste of? instant noodle pass loom Ingredient of papaya salad. <laughs> Spicy, sour, sweet. <laughs> and it's originally from America, papaya. <laughs> I'm hungry now. <laughs> Snack, fry banana. when we put it in river or canal. This one like a souvenir coin. That's a post uh, mailbox. That's a, the red one. Is the mailbox? So um, yeah, I'm thankful for my sister that she made this video too. <laughs> she did a really good job, in my opinion. Any 
question related to what you saw in the video. And I just answer Professor Waini that this video she published it um, in August 2019. Okay. And I saw the photo booth in that one. I remember my sister sent me the photo of my father and my mother wear Thai traditional dress and then they sit in the photo booth and then took the photo together too. <laughs> That's nice. Mm -hmm. okay. And the uh, next video is um, the video at Jim Thompson house. Um, a lady showed that she processed the silk. Maybe this is the biggest. Okay. So in the pot is the silk. Okay. Cocoon of Thai silk warm. And this is at Jim Thompson house. Jim Thompson is an American and he start, he interested in Thai silk and then um, I can share with you guys about Jim Thompson first. Uh, so here um, in the Wikipedia I mentioned that he was an American businessman who helped revitalize the Thai steel industry in 1950 and 1960. Okay. Um, let's see. If I cannot open with this I will use how to run. Lotus, flower and lotus leaf. It was at Jim Thompson house. And um, let me stop share my screen a little bit to show you again the silk, the uh, necktie by Thai silk. So this is the necktie by Thai silk. It's written 100% silk, Thai silk, handmade, made in Thailand. So this is the product. So pretty, <laughs> thank you. And then let me share my screen back again. Okay. This one, um, I need to thank to my sister 
one of my sister, Jean. So I told her I'm so excited to have opportunity to talk with you all. And she like, and I asked her, okay, I will talk about creative process related to Thai royal family and Thailand. Any suggestion for the topic? So she mentioned about food and uh, dessert. So I'm like, okay. Then um, she actually helped me find the uh, information too. So thank you to Jean. <laughs> so let's see together. Let me make it bigger if I'm if I doing full screen like this, do you guys still see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So here, um, let's learn about Thai cookery arts. So when you go to the Thai restaurant or when you order takeout, right? You might see the menu. Oh, gan kiao wan. You might think, what is gan, right? So gan means the soup and usually use the curry paste in the soup too. So on the left is gan kyo wan and then masaman. They don't have the word gan, but it's considered as gan. And then on the right, if you see the word tom, okay, you have two types. One type is tom ju, this one not spicy. Okay. And on the right, tom yum, this one is uh, spicy. Um, I think tom yum gung is one of the gung mean shrimp one of the most popular dish from Thailand. Okay, so now you learn gang and tom. <laughs> okay, top left, ping, mean like grill. And this one, they tell more information that grill over hot charcoal. Okay, can I say barbecue? Oh, similar to barbecue. Yeah, it can be both sweet and meat dish such as luk shin ping, luk shin mean fish ball, or can be pork ball too. Gluwe ping mean banana, grill, grill banana. Sometimes they put sweet sauce on it, so good. <laughs> on the right is yang or pao. This one they mentioned it is grill over flame. Okay. And it's like gai yang, like chicken, grill chicken. Pramuk yang, pramuk is squid okay. on the top uh, on the bottom left yum mean mix usually you mix with chili and sour sauce such as lime lemon and they call that sauce total uh, everything in the sauce is nam yum mean the juice to make the taste such as yam wun sen wun sen is the mung bean noodle Yam mu yo. This one is uh, pork. Yeah. And on the light, right bottom is pla. This one is a spicy salad with shred lemon glass, coffee alarm leaf. This leaf is smell, it's aroma, it has some smell and mint leaf. Pla uh, kung. Anyone remember why is it kung? <laughs> Shrimp. <laughs> Shrimp. <laughs> and then pla nea, nea mean beef. Pat, you might have heard pat thai, right? Pat means stir fry. Or pat pia wan. Pia means sour, wan means sweet. So it means the stir fry of the dish that have the taste of sweet and sour. Tot means fry. Gai tot. Anyone remember what is sky? <laughs> chicken. Okay. Gai tot means fried chicken. Pla tot means fried fish. Lon. This one I'm not really familiar with it. I need to read too. Uh, they said cook in coconut milk and has sour, salty, and my sweet taste. Usually served with fresh various vegetables. Pu lon. Pu means Crab, crab meat. And tao jiao lun. Tao jiao is the fermented soybean. And on the right, bottom right, buot. Okay, this one is Thai dessert. Cooked in sweetened coconut milk with slightly salty. On the left is gluai buot chi. 
uh, my sister and me just made this one grow but she and uh what fuck tong or fuck tong gang board fuck tong mean pumpkin or squash yeah. i'm hungry too <laughs> okay the other day on YouTube in Thailand, they made a dish with fried flour. Oh, yes, yes, I saw that too. All, all similar to, I feel it's similar to tempura too, like, like you know, the Japanese food dish. <laughs> oh, if you say you love Thai food, I suggest this channel too. YouTube channel, Hot Thai Kitchen. If you want to make some Thai food uh, or Thai dessert. <laughs> You can search it. Yeah. I can type it here too. Let me type it on in the chat. Okay. And here, Thai dessert. Um, which one first? Either one. Okay, let's start with on the left. Khao niao ma muong. Khao niao means sticky rice. Ma muong means mango. Okay, this sticky rice is not just plain sticky rice. We mix it with coconut milk and some sugar and salt, a little bit of salt too. And my sister and me just made that too. The sticky rice, this one. <laughs> and we eat it with ripe mango. On the top here. <laughs> Yeah, and the top is kanong sai sai. So this one is steamed coconut pudding, stuffed with sweetened and shred coconut, wrapped with banana leaf. So the banana leaf is like a container. Yeah. Similar to khao tom mat, you have banana leaf as a container. And khao tom mat have sticky rice uh, with coconut milk and uh, slightly sweet flavor. And Usually inside have banana and black bean in it. The middle one is a uh, kanom chan. Kanom chan mean layer sweet. Uh, oh yeah, layer is it. You can peel it each layer, so you can bite it. But me, when I eat it, I like to peel it. I don't know why, but yeah. <laughs> and, um, so they they put food coloring uh, in it uh, or or they can use um, um, the material that have color not material i forgot what they use like a uh, pandan leaf can give green color so they can use that to add color to the snack uh, the dessert here like pandan rose coffee you can they can make different tastes i like the pandan the most yeah, the green one Black Kim Kai Tao. This one um, is half sweet taste, I remember. And I remember when I was younger, <laughs> I saw the, the person who sell it, they carry it in like a two basket. You have one rod of wood and then two basket. So that person carry it and then they sell it to to customer. Yeah. And we bring our own bowl to get this Pakim Khai Tao. And, and the sailor sing the song too, the song of Pakim Khai Tao, yeah. <laughs> when they come to sell it. I remember I even wrote a poem about Pakim Khai Tao. <laughs> yeah, something about uh, Pakim Khai Tao, uh, the sailor singing the song and coming to our house or something. <laughs> Okay, I'm glad I remind me of that time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, wa I'm wondering if you remember the song. <laughs> yeah, I need to think about it. Um, I don't remember. I need to ask my mom. <laughs> and, and on the top left, Khanom uh, Kok. So this one, they have a special pan. That pan have this shape, so you can, so the cell, uh, the chef can pour the ingredient, which have coconut 
and something else. So they call it coconut pudding, and then they pour it from the pot into the pan, and then let it cook, and then they use like spoon to scoop it out. And you can put different thing on top of it, like corn, uh, taro, pumpkin. So good, yeah. And then kanom beung. This one similar to taco, but not the same. Okay, it can be savory one. It can be sweet one. I prefer the sweet one. Yeah, this one. Uh, they said topping sweet meringue cream with foy tong. I I will talk about foy tong. Uh, here here foy tong. Have tong yip tong yot and foy tong, and I will have clearer image in the next slide of foy tong. Okay, and foy tong have egg yolk in it in it too. Yeah, but it's sweet. They they add sugar too, and then sarim, vermicelli, translucent vermicelli, served with jasmine scent, sweet coconut milk, and crushed ice. Bua loy. This one have um, tiny sticky rice dumpling in sweetened coconut milk. Usually we eat it hot, but I know nowadays they have chef ice with the taste of bua loy kai wan, mean uh, kai mean egg. So they have this bua loy with cooked egg in it, but it's not. You cannot see the egg. It's like it's already. Inside it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go to the um, last slide for the dessert. So here, let me explain tong yip. So I would say the top three, the taste are similar, just the structure and the texture are different. So tong yip look like a flower, and then tong yod is look like a water droplet. And then foy tong, this one is like, uh, it's like a noodle, but it's not exactly, but it's like strip, yeah, into many, many strip. And this one is another way of they serve the kanong chan. Instead of layer, they make it into flower shape. Tong egg, this one they have a tiny, tiny piece of edible gold on the, in the middle. Yeah. And then met kanun. Kanun mean. What does kanun mean? Let me see. Kanun, kanun, kanun. Let me search the picture of kanun. Oh, jackfruit. Yeah, this, this kanun means jackfruit, but um, met mean the seed of jackfruit. So they, I think the shape is look like the seed of jackfruit. That's why they name it met kanun. But the taste is sweet. Ja mongkut. This one outside is crispy. Yeah. And it means superior, superior, pretty, like a king. Mongkut means the crown, the crown. Yeah. Okay. Sene Jan. I haven't tried this one before. They said it represents the love of the love life of the bride and groom. It's beautiful as a full moon. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, Chan mean like the moon. We call the moon Duang Chan or Pra Chan, either one. So here, Chan is come from the moon. And last one, Tui Fu. Fu mean fluffy. Yeah, and Tui mean like a cup. And they said it mean to rise or to increase, obviously implying prosperity. Okay, so that's um, uh, some information about Thai food and dessert. Hope you guys um, enjoy it. <laughs> and the next one, I will talk about coin. Okay, <laughs> here is here are Thai coin. Okay, because we have an online class, so I was. I'm not able to pass the coin around, but at least you can see the front and back side of it. The side is this big, so I hold it in my hand. Okay, <laughs> maybe compare with what? Compare with a penny. 
Okay, let me find my penny. I don't have any penny in my bag. Okay, then I don't have to compare. But yeah, similar, um, like a little, oh, here. No, this is not penny. This is probably penny size, and then this is this one. Yeah. <laughs> so on the top left, this is one baht. Nowadays, um, let me search it. I want to check uh, the, the currency, the exchange currency. So right now, one dollar is around 32, 33 baht, okay? And this is one baht, okay? This is two baht, five baht, and 10 baht, okay? So on the left, uh, at the back of one baht coin, it show Temple of Emerald Buddha, okay? This is Temple of Emerald Buddha. You can see the similarity, right? And then on the top right is two baht and show the what's the gate. This one, what's the gate? At the sunset time. And on the bottom left is show the what Benjamin Bopit. Okay. And on the bottom right show Prapang Wat Arun. And this image was taken on the boat. So this is, uh, you sit in the boat and then you take this image. And you can see the different color. Um, they made from different kind of material too. Okay. So um, for one bar is iron coated nickel. And for two bar is aluminum bronze. And for five bar is cupronical, and the ten bar is cupronical in the outer ring, and the aluminum bronze in the middle. And yes, thank you, Christopher. What mean temple? You see here. What, what, what mean temple? Yeah. So that's um about Thai coins, and I didn't show. We have. <laughs> How can I say this? 50 satan, which is 0.5 baht, the tiny one here. But yeah. <laughs> okay. And I talk about coin. And okay, this is the, uh, before I go to this one, maybe I exit the full screen first. I want to talk about the bill first. Okay. So this is the Thai bill. One of the Thai bills is this is the this side of the Thai bill. On on the left, bottom left have this figure on the left here, and I translate the word at the bottom left. So uh, he is King Rama five, and he. Mentioned that all those slaves in Siam is voluntary, really. Having slaves could prevent the civilization and the happiness of Siamese. Slavery should be stopped. So at that time, he strategized the, the way to stop slavery by generation. So he, he made the rule that, okay, this generation will stop to be slave first and then the following generation okay so he didn't make the route to stop the slavery for every generation right away and um yeah and that is one of the side of the thai bill if you look at the other side okay this is king rama nine okay and right now they have the one that uh, have King Rama 10, which is his son um, on the bill. Okay. Okay. 
and this one to help you see the big picture of Thai loyal family a little bit. I I saw this um, image. Um, my dad took it at the Golden Jubilee Museum of Agriculture Office. Uh, on the top left is King Rama one, and then his wife, and then King Rama two. And today I talk with you about um, King Rama nine, right? King Rama nine and Mahidon, and this is his wife, and he have two son and one daughter. Okay, this is he. He is king. He was. Uh, he is King Rama eight, and he is King Rama nine. They are brothers. Okay, and this is a uh, Queen Sirikit. Okay, and in the view, the red view that I showed earlier, this is King Rama five. Yeah. This is King Rama five. Yeah. And. Um, on the top left here is Mahidon holding his child and he passed away when he was around 30, mm, around, if I recall correctly, around 36. Mm, and after the death of the prince's father, uh, Prince mother brought up the three loyal siblings and she followed the prince father ideology by which he had worked up to his full potential, potentiality for the disadvantage of the poor. She told the queen grandmother that she would be delighted if she could help her children be trained and educated in the subjects beneficial for the country. Okay. And this is their, no, this is uh, uh, Mahidon wife or the um, uh, prince mother. Yeah. Okay. And this is King Rama 8, Queen Rama 9, and their daughter. Yeah. And this is King Rama 9. Okay. So when he ran, he uh, his first thought on his coronation day is, "I shall reign with righteousness for the benefits and happiness of the Siamese people." And throughout his life, um, he worked on many projects for people. And my mom told that he. Go to every. He went to almost every corner of Thailand. Sometimes buy food. Sometimes buy food because the transportation is not available. The trans. The for example, no road. Okay, and um, he worked with grassroots people, and uh, in this image, I think it's rice. Yeah, I think this is rice. Yeah. And uh, for these slides on the left, I show the photograph that this person submit to. Uh, they have an event about people who had the photo of themselves with King Rama Nai, and then he had the photo. He had the photo that his friend took for him when he had opportunity to meet with King Ramanai. And he put the photo description that, I will remember King Pumipon until I die. And he worked as a teacher and, and he shared with the public about the sentence that King Pumipon told him. So King Pumipon asked him about general thing like how, how is he doing and um, how he went to how he go to teach and then um, and later King Pumipon said please teach ethic and teach students to do good things for our community and um, 
I mentioned here that he also asked about his job and his family well-being. So he he told King Bumipon that he ride a bike to the school, and on the way there is a canal, but there is no bridge, so he need to walk with his bike, like. But the canal is not too deep, so he can still walk across it. But later, um, King Pumipon um, um, helped assign people to build a bridge there for, for the teacher and family, other family there. Yeah. And at that time, he was 27. Right now, he is around 85 years old. And on the top left is a photo of King Pumipon show photograph to students. At that time, they study about um, what do you call artificial rain. Okay, so he developed a project about artificial rain for um, people who do agricultural in Thailand. And he emphasized to teach students both knowledge and ethics, yes. And at the bottom show the photo of King Raman Nai fed, fed the fish, okay? And this is in his palace. People might imagine, oh, palace, you need to have a beautiful castle or house. But in his palace, he also have pond for fish garden, big garden. I haven't been there, but um, I have read and I have heard. And um, uh, one of the story is that um, at that time, the prince from Japan gave him 50 tilapia, okay? And then at that time he gave to like people, but then some people, Many people told him that, oh, the fish was, the fish are dying. And so later he need to call some fish back. And then he tried to, he and his team tried to um, find a way to raise the fish. And later they were successful. And they were success on growing, uh, on taking care of the fish so they can later share with the people that want to raise the fish and an interviewer asked him do you eat tilapia he said no it's like my pet <laughs> yeah. and um, so this slide i would like to share about um, how prince mother or the king ramanai mother um, teach her kids. The first one, um, I read a story that uh, one of her kids doesn't want to memorize the poem in German. So what she did is that she contacted the teacher, the German teacher. Um, Could you please teach me how to memorize this German poem? And then she practiced until she can memorize it. And then she, um, she, she tell this poem to her son, and then her son like, whoa, how could you do that? And then her son have motivation to practice and um, learn about um, German and different language. I know Prince Rinton, who is the daughter of King Ramanai, she can speak. Chinese, she can speak um, Viet, I think Vietnam too, and Thai, Cambodian, so she can speak many languages too. Yeah. And when her children want favorite music record, they need to collect money by themselves and buy it by themselves, but they want to if, when, if they want a classical music record for educational purpose, then 
she buy it for them, and she allow her children to play with fire. But she also teach the way to start fire safely, and she taught her kid to plant a tree. And uh, I saw the story that King Pumipon was able to build a pond by himself. Yeah. And she told that people have strength and weakness improved a significant one. And she taught her children to finish their food if they already pick it, um, if they already um, put it in their plate. So to reduce food go to waste. And, um, and that will be all the slide that um, I prepare for you guys. And um, open for any question, comments that you might have. Yeah. This is your chance, guys. Ask questions. <laughs> yeah. And um, King Pumipon, he also plays saxophone. He sells the board too. And I think, um, may I share one of the melody that he composed? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. Then now um, let me bring it up here. And I hope somebody asks a question, otherwise I'm going to have to ask a question. I have one. Uh, great. Um, and, and I'm hungry. <laughs> And I think this one would be a good. The sound is difficult to follow. Oh, I see. In that case, uh, let me share the piano one. That's a part of um, the melody, and I know this is the song, the name of the song, Love at Sundown. So yeah, in case any one of you want to hear the whole song, this is guitar, oh, I need to wait here. So that's the melody, yeah. <laughs> I will stop share my screen. <laughs> so I have a technical question. Yes. 
when they had the, the tribute uh, to the king by the visitor from the United States, the lady who was talking very formally, there were um, Thai subtitles on the screen. Oh. And, yes. and in the languages that I'm familiar with, there are, there are gaps, there are spaces between words. And what I see a very long character string. So is one of those characters a character for a space? Mm, we don't have many space for the um, but I want to show, um, I try to think of example. Um, maybe, let me try. Let me find maybe example. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. My hit on mm -hmm. I'm fascinated by the by the just the, the patterns that the, the letters create. Mm -hmm. English looks so boring in comparison. <laughs> um I'm open the Wikipedia and I want to Maybe try to find the pattern for to answer about the pattern to let me see. For example, this is in Thai and I can make it bigger. Mm, so mm, okay. So this is the whole sentence and then this is like such as. Uh -huh. And then they have the name and then comma and then this N. So they have space oh. on such as an N. And then this is a sentence. So this, there are many words in the sentence. So how do you know when one word stops and another word starts? Is there, is there some Mem indication or is just, you, just rec you just recognize it because you've been, that's, that's what you do when you learn to read in that, in that character set? Yes, I memorized this is like when, uh, and this is the vocabulary for loyal family too. Like we have other vocabulary when we talk to royal family or when we talk about loyal family. Yeah, this one, instead of saying when he is younger, we, instead of saying younger in Thai, like, dek. But when we talk about royal family, we need to call when, um, uh, okay, instead of dek, we say song prayao. So it's longer. <laughs> In general, it's longer. <laughs> yeah. And then he say with, uh, with his mother in the palace. <laughs> oh, um, impressive. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I'm, I'm just looking at the chat here. So, so one of our students has said that he will definitely try a lot of the foods. Uh, food is one of his favorite things to learn about other cultures. Great. So, I'm glad. Well, you see, you know, if we were, if we were all back in Merced, I would, I would, I would feel obliged to, uh, to start cooking for this class. Uh, <laughs> and, the, and then they would tell me, please, to stop, and they'd ask you to come and do it instead. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, for the class, any any questions? I just think about it. You can ask about creativity. You can ask about the royal family. You can ask about everyday life in Thailand. You can ask about creativity in the kitchen. You can ask about cre creativity doing a PhD thesis. I mean, man, you've got a lot of questions you could ask here, right? Mm, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh. <laughs> um, enjoying the uh, enjoy yeah well it struck it struck a chord there with the with the culinary uh, references and many thanks to Jean who um, she's uh, quite knowledgeable about food I think yes <laughs> thank, you. thank you Jean so here's a question on the chat is reading Thai the same way as knowing when a sentence ends in the English text when someone doesn't end with punctuation 
So how would you know a question versus an exclamation versus a sentence versus, uh, hey, it's time to breathe or you're not going to be able to finish the sentence? <laughs> uh, we, um, in order to know whether it's a question, it's like we have the word what in the sentence. For example, one knee, which is today, couldn you eat gin? Alright. Okay. วันนี้คุณกินอะไรวันนี้ mean today คุณ mean you กิน mean eat อะไร mean what but we don't have question mark. Okay. So it's a bit like the Canadians saying a hey, at the end of a sentence when they're when they're trying to turn it into a question. Mm, yes. Uh, that's. Uh, uh, I don't know if I have any people with Canadian uh, uh, family in my class, but. I, I have Canadian family, so kind of notice though because it, it's a it, it's sort of a figure of speech in Canada. You know, nice. It's um, good to see you, eh? You know, or uh, shall we uh, shall we uh, shall, shall we um, shall we go out for a beer, eh? <laughs> so they're all they're all A students, I guess. Um, let's see. I'm just wow. Well, um, somebody could turn on the somebody could turn on their uh, microphone or put up your hand in the chat, and we can. Mm -hmm. I'm checking, checking up and down. See, it's it's great for me now because somebody else is doing the somebody else is leading the meeting, so I can sit here and read the chat and see whose hand is up, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm I'm trying I'm trying to return the favour. Uh, Vipari was just, as I, like I said earlier, when she when she was a grad student, she was a fantastic TA. So I'm trying to be your TA today and just keep <laughs> keep keep track of what's going on. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let's see. And from Kelly, uh, um, am I pronounced correctly? K K Kai K Kai Kai. I assume, but uh, maybe he'd like to correct us. I, I I've always called I, I have always called him Kai, but. Kai. Um, yes, yeah, similar to what you're saying, like you know the structure, and then when it's in, we can tell that okay, this is complete sentence. Yeah. And the hot Thai kitchen channel, you're welcome. That I mentioned, um, she has some lesson about Thai language too, like for that YouTube channel. So if you are interested. You can take a look. Yeah. I have to share an anecdote with the class here. This was some years ago now, but there was a party at Professor Lou's house. And I'm always late for everything just because I, I, <laughs> I'm always doing something else. And so I, typically I was a little bit late for the party. And I got to the party and the doors in the house of Professor Lou's, the doors were open. The windows were open. There was a fantastically enticing smell of wafting out of the house, and I thought, okay, well, I hope I hope I haven't missed this. But in fact, it was kind of a sort of potluck kind of event, and I went in there, and there was Miss Lim standing in front of the stove, stirring, just sort of in the zone, stirring. I, I think your thoughts were your thoughts were probably you know, on a different continent at this point. You you transported yourself to to some very happy place, and. Almost everybody else was sort of trying not to cry. It was a very, because it was a very spicy dish that you were cooking. It was it was just beautifully aromatic. And even there was one other there was one other student in the place in the room that, that was Alex, and he was he, he he liked his food really spicy. And I was in heaven because I really love spicy food. But it was and it really was the best part of Thai that I've had in my life. <laughs> so, <laughs> So, folks, this is what you're dealing with: somebody who's not just not just showing you pretty pictures and talking about stuff, but she really knows what she's doing. <laughs> and it's not even a subject. And it's not even a subject she has a PhD in. So, <laughs> and co correction a little bit. I think that one might be Pat Grapau. Pat Grapau. Let me tie with Pat Grapau. Is, is that the one you were making uh, at, at Professor Lu's house? You mean? Yes, yes. Oh, well, I, I, stand, I stand corrected, gladly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you typed it in. Yes. <sighs> oh. But it's have, you can add a lot of 
uh, chili in yeah, that dish usually is sort of spicy. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I had this completely untested theory that you know they say if you if you if you catch the coronavirus then you get a very dry cough. So I, I don't know what anybody else is going to do, but if I get coronavirus, I'm going to start eating the spiciest food. I'm going to just get busy here and eat the spiciest things that I can because that produces mucus and I might still have the virus but it's not going to be a dry cough it's going to be a very wet cough by that point and that's going to be that's going to be one of my uh, <laughs> one of my home remedies <laughs> I hope I don't have to test it but if I do I'll let people know all right um, we are well into the um, we're well into the uh, into the time for the meeting here but it's I, I've I've enjoyed watching the chat here and so last chance folks uh, if you have any questions ask them now otherwise we will say goodbye to Miss Lim and then you have to put, put up with me trying to put people in the chat rooms before I uh, before I go and take a short break um, okay here we are oh, uh, so Miriam has asked what is a normal day in Thailand like normal day uh Let's see. I try to think about my experience. Mm. It's flashback when I was a master degree student. I can share with you what I remember. So I left my house in the morning. I took a uh, tuk-tuk or could be taxi to the BTS, which is a guy train. And then I arrived near MBK, which is the mall. And then I walk inside Chula Longkorn University to get into my department, petrochemical department. And then I, I took the class there. During lunchtime, I walk with my friend to the canteen. We have different canteens in the campus, Chulalongkorn campus. And the food in the canteen have many different types of food. And then we like to, uh, and we, the canteen that I remember is like the, the canteen ODC at the college, right? And then uh, we can order how many side dish we want. And usually I order rice with three side dish or something. And then I just eat with my friend. And then we walk back to the department and then we, um, we learn in the class. And then when I back home, similar way, I walk to the sky train and then I took the sky train, connect with the, us, with the bus and then Mm, arrive home and, yeah and for weekend sometime we sometime i went to the park with my family and um, yeah and nowadays it's different because of the coronavirus too we we have quarantine too my sister she is taking online class in the college from the college too and um my mom says sometimes there is a car sale vegetable passing in front of her house and um, if they doesn't have the vegetable that she wants sometimes she asks them um, will you be able to bring this that those <laughs> the vegetable that she wants in the other day yeah um, you mentioned a sky train what is a sky train oh like subway uh, the train uh, like um, Bart, yes, in uh, San Francisco. Yeah. Why is it why is it called Sky Train? Because it, 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 it's 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 up in the air, not underground. Uh, yeah, it is up in the air, and we do have the 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 one underground too, but they from different company. Yeah, so is the Sky Train is, is it a monorail or is it is it two tracks or is it a single track with a with a monorail train on it? Mm. Two track, you mean like can have can both side, right? Like uh, have no, no, I I meant like regular trains. They've got wheels on both sides. 
Oh. Um, so you've got you've got wheels on the under the left hand side, under the right hand side. A monorail sort of got wheels in the middle, and it kind of goes on a single track. Is it? Monorail. It's a monorail. Okay, that's 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 what I'm doing. Okay, so Kai is saying, why is it that Thai people use a different name, like a nickname, instead of their real name for things? That's a good question. Uh, yeah, I think it's in general it's shorter. <laughs> for once, when I was born, my dad. Uh, I forgot who. My either dad or mom. One person. Uh, name me. Name my first name, and then one person name my nickname. So I already have this nickname since I was born, and in my family they call me by my nickname. Yeah, because my nickname is shorter than my first name. Yeah. <laughs> Do nick some sometimes in, um, you know, in in English families and in American English families, the same name runs in families. So, because your father is called a particular name or your mother is a particular name, then you might have that name in yours, and it maybe go back several generations like that. Uh, does that happen with the formal name, and does it happen with the nickname in Thailand? Oh. Um. <laughs> and this is special for my family. Uh, for my nickname, for our nickname, we keep this sound, the Y sound, like Ya, Yong, Yen, Yin, Yo, Yo, Yo. It's the sound of like Y sound. <laughs> okay, so what happened to Jean? <laughs> yin, yin, like it's like Y too, but it my is, mom, I... my mom doesn't want J E A N as a Jean for pen. She wanted it to be G E N E as a chromosome. Gene okay. chromosome. <laughs> but there's no, there's no Y there. Yeah, <laughs> so, no Y. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, so well, Kai, Kai is doing a lot of typing here. He said he, he also said it, he read that it had something to do about spiritual or something as well. Mm. So, yeah. um, mm, that's for, for me, not my nickname. I think it's not about spiritual. But my father, I think my father told that um, when I was born, um, I was born in April, which is the month that, the hottest month in Thailand. And, um, but the day that I was born, they, it has a raining, it's raining, it was raining. So they said it's like, it feel, the weather feel like cold. And my, my name can have two meanings. One can mean, my nickname have two meanings. One can mean cold weather or the other, if you combine with the word mild, um, like jai yen, it means calm. Yeah. That definitely fits. <laughs> uh, good, good, uh, good foresight there. <laughs> I have seen, I have seen uh, Miss Lim under under a lot of pressure and writing writing a thesis and finishing a PhD can be a lot of pressure and even under the worst pressure that that, that I've ever really seen a graduate student student under, outwardly at least she was very calm. <laughs> so, mm. yeah. It's an inspiration actually about how to um, and I. I, th I, th I enjoyed I enjoyed the semester the, the semester when when we were teaching together because uh, and of course everybody knows I talk too fast I wave my hands I'm sort of foaming at the mouth and just kind of getting carried away and, and you were always really calm and just kind of <laughs> a very a very a very good antidote. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. So um, okay, anybody other than Kai wants to add to the chat? Oh, here we go. He's well. Uh, all right. No, he's still uh, he's still writing, and that's good. Um, how different are the Thai noodles compared to Americanized noodles? Very. <laughs> to Americanized noodle. Oh. Mm. 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 Could be the spice. Mm. Might have stronger spice. 
and um, but Thai, Thai, we have different type of noodle too. The noodle dish, we have rice noodle, we have thin egg noodle, mm. uh, I, mm, I can maybe show the picture. It's called Guay Tiao. Many people like this dish. Guay Tiao. Oh, uh, similar to pho. Mm, this one similar to pho. Yeah. Let me how to. So this is kway tiao. The rice noodle is inside, and they have like fish ball meat, and they eat with green sprout, lemon. Yeah, this is kway tiao. And I'm not sure what do you mean by Americanized noodle. Yeah. <laughs> I noticed it said Nom Pen in the uh, in the description. Then that's Cambodian, right? Oh, right. Phnom Penh. Yes, that yeah. Cambodia. So that yeah, would be so Cambodian. So it's, it's similar to Thai. Um, Kui Tiao, yeah, I think they they are similar, yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm, there is another one that I really like too, but me hen. This one I think the is mixed Thai and Chinese. This dish. Uh, oh, how can maybe this one? <laughs> So many, many, many things, many things in the chat here suddenly appeared. Um, <laughs> Nina wants to know how difficult is it to find vegan food in Thailand cuisine? Oh, now they have more vegan food in Thailand cuisine. Um, I, so vegan mean without like egg and milk too. So rice noodle is, can, we can make it vegan. Pad Thai can use tofu instead. Uh, <laughs> there's, a lot, there's a lot of vegetables in Thai food, right? Yes, you, yes. You do, do, do you do you have do you have dishes which don't require eggs or or milk or uh, or meat in any sense? Um, we use coconut milk. I think this one. Tofu. I think we could make this one vegan. Tomka. Ka mean kalangao. Similar to ginger, but it's not ginger. Yeah. So we use coconut milk. We do not for this dish we do not use like milk from cow. Yeah. And kalangao. Kao is this one. Sort of a rounder thing, isn't it? Uh, it's like a. It's like this. Look like this. This is Kalangkal. Can you share your screen? Oh, I forgot. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yes, this is yeah. Tinker. This is Kalangkal. Hmm. Less yellow than ginger. Yeah, this kalangkau. And tomka is this one. Uh, tomka tofu. Can maybe. Yeah. It's the soup uh, with coconut milk, uh, kalangkau, kaffee lime leaf, lemon glass. Yeah. <laughs> so it sounds, it sounds Nina it, it sounds like it's possible <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> it is possible <laughs> oh and Kai said in, in terms of instant noodle oh instant noodle <laughs> uh, we might have like tom yum taste of instant noodle and we might have like the 
the taste might be more spice in the taste. Yeah. Like if you remember in the video from Museum Sayam, there is one of the photo that have different mama in San Udo, different taste. Yeah. I wish we had I wish we had seafood ramen. Perhaps we do these days, but but the um mm. For, for as far as instant noodles go, the the best instant noodles I've ever had were in Japan from a, the equivalent of a 7-Eleven once. And I was completely on my own. My, my host was stuck. He, he, the, the guy who was supposed to meet me at the airport, he was still stuck in the USA. <laughs> and so I was kind of on my own for, for, for like a day and you know, went, went into something that looked like a 7-Eleven, uh, picked up some, my, my, my mother-in-law is Japanese Hawaiian. So I'd kind of seen some of the some of the products before and the uh, the seafood ramen if there's any fl if they ever put something like that together and sell it in the u.s i'm i'm, I'm gonna go shopping but, <laughs> <laughs> but that's a flavor we could we, we could use here here's another question which are more delicious street vendor food or restaurant food in your mm -hmm. opinion <laughs> um, let's see in my opinion Strong and straight vendor. Mm. So if, I, you're a, if you're a student and you're, yeah. you're you're going out with a few oh. friends, do you go to a restaurant? Do you go to the street food vendor? Do oh. you go all the do you go all the way back to the university of the canteen because that's the best food <laughs> around? <laughs> uh, let's see. From my recent experience that I went to Thailand in December two thousand nineteen, so I. I went to um restaurant too with my friend, but it's we had uh, no that's one not restaurant we went to Starbucks actually one time <laughs> <laughs> and um uh, uh there there was the time that we went to restaurant for breakfast, and I remember we ordered pasta and something else, and then dessert. I, I feel it is a good like it, it have some choice of different salad and pasta and I I had a good memory about eating at that restaurant too. And there was a time that my friend we get together in one of my friend house and we order different thing. We order grilled chicken, we order from one of the restaurant the salad. And we order KFC, <laughs> and and we share the cost together. Yeah, so we order from different place and and for the street food. So this one is like kind of gray area a little bit. When I went to my undergraduate school, um, for dinner we usually go to eat nearby our dorm dormitory. So it's they sell it on street, but they have um table and chair for us to sit and i I feel i i do not i did not have any bad experience eat it there yeah so oh. i think yeah so. <laughs> I'm looking at Miriam's question here. It says any food recommend any any food Thai recommendations. I'm going to I'm going to interpret that question. Say if, mm. when we're all back in Merced, and so we're talking. This is a freshman class, so everyone's going to come back, and so we'll we'll we will meet again. And where in Merced, by your experience, is the best Thai food? And. Mm. I think I know where it is, but but I, I think they're talking about restaurants. <laughs> oh, I see. Um, or you mean the dish, Mariam? You mean well, the dish, or you mean the place? <laughs> so, so I, I'm going to interpret that and say which place would you go to, and place. then and and then if if I, it's also another good interpretation is uh, which dish? Yes, let's, uh, let's uh, perhaps you can answer both. Yes, um, for the place, I. I usually go to Thai Star restaurant and um, I like to order Tom Kha Gai and I like to order Masaman and I sometimes I order fried fish with a spicy sauce um, and for 
uh, for which one? What is the name of that one? There is a Thai restaurant near Starbucks on uh, the promenade or promenade um, Thai cuisine too. That one I remember I like Pat Wun Sen, which is stir fry mung bean noodle with vegetable and uh, your choice of tofu or meat. Yeah, I like that one. So in my interpretation is sometimes different the song have different dish that I like too. <laughs> yeah. So the Thai star which you mentioned, that is the one uh, on Alexander near the UPS store, is that right? Yes. That's right. right. So just in, ca in case people haven't explored that, that's that part of what I said. So you go, go down G Street, um, so from the campus you go down G Street, uh, past the Save Mart, and it's kind of the next block down to the right, and about two thirds of the way down the little strip mall there. Uh, very, very good Thai food, actually. Yeah. And uh, I know on campus we have a uh, San Cafe, that one, I'm not sure nowadays he still sell it, but he sell the dumpling, like we call it um, salapau. <laughs> it's like Chinese style, but I also like dumpling from his restaurant. <laughs> yeah. And go to his restaurant, it's on Martin Luther King, just the other side of the freeway from campus, mm -hmm. kind of set back from the road a little bit. And Sam, if you haven't met Sam, he's a He's kind of a pillar of the Lao community here in Merced. And they, so, for example, if you if you follow the, they, I guess it's been cancelled for this year, but they, for the last few years they've been having a Lao uh, New Year's parade, usually sometime in sort of March or April. And Sam is very much kind of a leader of that and has, has a lot of civic pride. He also runs a fine restaurant, very engaging. Um, and if you, however spicy you like it, he'll make it spicier. If you don't want it spicy, he'll make it the way you like it as well. So he's very, very happy to substitute, and and he's he's, he's not paying me to say this, but I, mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a very high regard for him and and, and his his uh, customer oriented friendliness as well. <laughs> so yes, Julian is quite correctly saying let's convince the pavilion to start serving Thai food. Yes, well that would be nice. Um, <laughs> Okay, here's, here's another one. How long do weddings in Thai culture last? For, for, for Kai's religion, it lasts three days. American weddings, sometimes they, you know, sometimes American weddings last longer than the marriage, I think. But, uh, oh, I'm recording myself, I shouldn't say things like that. <laughs> uh, no, um, Vipari, how long, how long are weddings in Thailand? I... I don't know what, um, usually it's one day, uh, uh, but um, before, so depend on the couple too, some couple, they have, uh, let me search it a little bit, it's called Ngan Man, which is before the wedding, but I don't know what it's called in English. Uh, Engagement. Um, some couple, they have the engagement ceremony in the morning and then they have the wedding ceremony in the afternoon or in the evening. Okay. But some couple, they have engagement ceremony like can be a year before the wedding ceremony or it can be like a few months, um, depend on the couple. Yeah, but um, the wedding ceremony is one day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I, I'm just, I'm just imagining, I'm, I'm, I'm just imagining the food, you know, <laughs> and the, and the silk, and the, and just the, if, if people are wearing traditional uh, clothing, I can imagine it's, uh, it's, it's it just uh, must be a, uh, just a paradise of sight and smell and taste and sound and. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I, I seem to have uh, got people off on a tangent here in the chat. <laughs> but, uh, 
Yeah. Anyway, I'm also having an eye on the clock. We're running up to, I guess we're not going to be in our chat rooms today, which saves me some embarrassment because my last, not chat rooms, the breakout rooms, my, my last few attempts, something, something different has gone wrong with each of my previous attempts at the breakout room. We're, 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 uh, we're getting better at it, but I, I, I haven't exhausted all the possibilities of getting things wrong yet, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I think we'll, we'll dispense with the breakout rooms. There's only a couple of minutes left on the clock here. So, um, and so Kai is telling us for his religion, uh, departure of the bride takes place first. Then the next day is the arrival at the groom. The next day is the ending somewhere around the van. Yeah, sounds, uh, sounds keeping everybody in suspense, I guess, with, with those, those notions. Well, it's been, well, um, as always, uh, and this is so, so just, just, you know, full disclosure here, the, the structure of the, um, the content of the um, of, of the creative process. Vipawi and I developed this together last year, and it really was a, it was a nice excuse and a great opportunity for me to carry on the collaboration after after Vipawi finished uh, her, her time as a PhD student. And um, I, I'm sure I gave her credit at the time, but I'll give her credit again that the the reason that we um, that we know about the fold scope and remember those, the paper centrifuge and the, and the microscope uh, that, that that was Vipari's fault because she'd been to a seminar by the person who would invented those things and she suggested to me that we really needed to include him in the uh, in, in the examples of creative people that we've been talking about and I, I think I'm going to talk to your group is it right in a uh, sometime next week or the week after I, I haven't been given a topic so I guess but if, if, any, if anything to go by last year, they kept me busy for a couple of hours. So I'm, I'm sure your group will have questions as well. Be, be All right. Well, thank you. Um, thank you to the students. I think we'll, I think we'll call it today. It's 3.19. And uh, may you all be productive. May you all be inspired. And I know what I'm doing next. I'm going to the kitchen. I'm looking for a snack. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Bipawi. Thank you. You're welcome. Take care, everybody. You too. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Cheers. <laughs>